Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, as you guys can probably tell from the title, we're going to be doing another total experiment here with the $5 Windows 98 PC. But as you can see, we've got a little bit of a different setup to start off this video. Uh, and that is because this is going to be a somewhat of a follow-up video to my last video on this computer, which was when I actually tried to clone uh, the hard drive to a USB flash drive. And uh, I mentioned in that video that, well, basically what I had to do was upgrade the memory in this computer from 192 megabytes to 256 megabytes, which at the time I thought was the maximum amount of RAM that this machine can support. And uh, I got a couple of comments from you guys basically saying that uh, this machine should be able to support 512 megabytes of RAM. And I actually did some additional research and basically found that, yeah, it does seem that this machine according to a couple of the uh, websites that I looked at, can support 512 megabytes of RAM. Now, I'm sure that leaves some of you guys wondering, well, where did you get that 256 megabyte uh, maximum figure from? Well, that was actually from the first website that I went on when I was actually looking up the specifications of this computer. It said that it only supports 256 megs of RAM, so that's just what I went with. But what we're going to be doing in this video is attempting to upgrade this machine to 512 megabytes, and then we're going to be trying to install Windows Vista on it. Now, we tried to install Windows Vista on this a couple of years ago, and it basically failed because it had such a low amount of memory. Now, Vista requires a minimum of 512 megabytes of RAM. Now, I have seen some workarounds to kind of install Vista on uh, lower spec machines that have worked, but in my case with 192 megs of RAM, it was not having it. So we've got a couple of different sticks of RAM here, as you can see, uh, to work with. And what we're going to be doing is basically trying a trial and error approach. We've got a couple of different sizes. These two right here, this one is 128 megabytes and this one is 64 megabytes. These two made up the 192 megs of RAM that was originally in this machine. So I know that these two work in this computer. So if for some reason this machine is not able to support 512 megs of RAM, we could put in one of these sticks and still bump the RAM up a little bit or see if we can bump it up past 256. But we're going to start out with this 256 megabyte stick right here and see if uh, we can get this machine up to 512 megabytes of RAM. All right, so we've got the additional 256 megabytes of RAM in this computer and what we're going to do now is just power it up and uh, see if it still posts. So it looks like it does. We're going to press the, I believe it's the tab key to view system messages. And uh, it now thinks it has 16 megabytes of system RAM. Uh, memory size decrease. So we're going to press F1 to run the setup here. Um, so that is not a good sign. So it did still post, but it's only recognizing um, 16 megabytes of RAM. Or actually, oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, so the total memory is 288 megabytes. Memory bank zero is 32 megabytes. And that stick said 256 on it. So either the computer is not able to recognize that it's 256 or the label on the stick is wrong um, but it is still so for some reason it said 64 megabytes at the very beginning now it's saying it's got 288 megabytes of RAM that is very interesting all right well I don't know if you guys were able to notice from the last shot but uh, two of these sticks right here are, are actually DDR so you can see that they're missing one of the notches that uh, this stick of RAM has to actually fit uh, in the slot so we're not going to be able to use both of these because they're just not compatible with the computer because they're DDR. Um, so we're going to, uh, but see, th this was the one that I pulled out right here. You see right there, it says, although it looks like there's a sticker placed on top of another sticker, but you see it says 256 megabyte SDR dim, like, I don't know, maybe, but this was saying it was 64 megabytes. So not even like two of these would make 256. So I don't know how that sticker got on there, or it's just something with the computer. But we've got right here, this is the stick that has no label on it, so I don't know um, you know, what size that it is. All right, so we've got both of those sticks in here. Let's see if this thing still posts. So it is powering on. Let's press the tab key to view system messages. 512 megabytes of system RAM, check that out. So I guess that one was 256. Let's go into setup here and see, uh, see, see what we got. Yep, those are two 256 megabyte sticks of RAM in this computer, making it a total of 512 megabytes. So check that out. It looks like this system can support 
Fire on 12 megabytes of RAM, that is awesome. And now that we've been able to verify that we can actually do this, we're gonna move on to try and install Windows Vista on this thing and see if we get better results than we did last time now that we have the minimum required amount of RAM. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so before we jump into the Vista installation, I wanna show you guys how I'm actually gonna be loading uh, Windows Vista on this computer. We're gonna be using a USB drive. Now, some of you guys are probably going, well, wait a second, there's no way that this computer supports USB booting. And you would be right. Uh, this computer is, it's again from the year 2000. It does not support USB booting, but we're gonna use a pretty cool piece of software called the Plop Boot Manager. I actually did a dedicated video on this a while ago on this channel. And Plop Boot Manager is a boot manager that when you boot into it can actually detect the USB drive and actually be able to boot from it. So what I'm going to do is actually put in the USB drive in, into the machine. All right, so now with the CD in the drive, what we're gonna do is go over to the boot tab. We're going to make sure that uh, the first boot device is the CD-ROM, which it is. And we're going to exit uh, saving changes. We didn't really make any changes, but uh, we'll save them anyway. And now it should uh, boot right off the CD. All right, so here is a Plop Boot Manager. The interface is very, very simple. All you have is down here at the bottom, you've got like your date and time. And then up here at the top, you've got a, a little menu. And you can see you can boot from the uh, hard drive, uh, partition number one, since we only have one partition on this drive, floppy, CD-ROM, or USB. We're gonna go to USB. And now it is going to uh, boot right off the USB for us. So we're gonna press enter. So yeah, that is how easy that it is to actually uh, load off of a USB drive, even on computers that don't support it. Uh, it's just by using Plot Boot Manager. I'll go ahead and uh, put that link down below. Well, first of all, to the video that I did on it, and also a, a, a link to download the software if you guys actually want to go ahead and check it out. Well, guys, long story short, uh, that didn't work. <laughs> um, so, we're going to have to resort to Plan B. What is Plan B, you might ask? Yeah, Plan B is a bunch of CDs. What we actually have here is a version of Windows Vista that uh, instead of being contained on one DVD, is actually contained on five CDs. And the reason we have to do this is because I don't have a DVD drive for this computer at the moment. I do have one, but it's in storage. And I don't have access to it right now. So let's go ahead and power this thing back on and uh, let's see if we can actually get Windows Vista to uh, load off the CD here. So we're gonna press any key to boot from the CD or DVD and uh, now oh yeah that's already looking much better so basically what it was doing is it actually when I was loading off of the USB drive it froze at about here um, and it didn't go any further than that then I actually let it sit there uh, and then after it, it you know wasn't moving I powered it off and turned it back on and then uh, it sat on this screen and the bar like hadn't even started going across the screen so and I let it sit like that for probably 15 minutes and it didn't do anything. Um, so yeah, we just kind of resorted to our plan B. Now, I actually don't have all of these CDs burned at the moment. I'm actually burning disk number three as we speak right now. I do have disk number one, which is inside of the drive right now, and disk two right here. Now, I don't recall exactly what happened in that original video where I tried to install Vista on this machine, but I'm not even sure if it booted into the setup. I think it might have failed to boot into the setup but you can see that we're we are actually we've, we've got a mouse cursor on, on the screen and the setup looks like it's actually loading up here so yeah you can see that the setup is actually loaded up here although it is in a very low resolution and uh, color mode here now this computer does meet the minimum ram requirements but for the cpu speed uh, it's still about half of what vista requires this is about a 400 megahertz cpu and Vista requires an 800 megahertz uh, CPU. So it's a good sign that the setup is actually loaded here, um, but we're gonna see if we can actually go any further than this. So let's just go ahead and press next here. And man, this like, I, I don't think I've ever seen Vista running, or the Vista setup running in this low of a color mode before. It actually looks kind of neat. It looks like a totally different image. I mean, you've got this like, almost looks like mountains, you know? <laughs> So let's see if we can just bypass the product key. So we're gonna to choose to not enter it right now. So we're gonna say no. Um, so good, we can kind of get past that for now. Yeah, this is going to be uh, very interesting to see how Vista actually performs on this. If it actually even installs, first of all, but uh, just to see how it actually performs. 
Um, so okay, so this looks like it's it's uh, one of those editions where you can you basically can choose what what release that you have, and you can see that Windows Vista Starter is actually on here as well, which is that kind of specialized version that I did a video on up in the cards. If you want to go ahead and actually check that out, just for the purposes of, of this video, I think we're going to choose Ultimate just to see how this computer works with Windows Vista Ultimate. So we're going to hit Next here. We're going to go to the Custom Advanced option. And it should find that hard drive. And now we will actually probably be able to use, or actually what we could probably do is uh, create a separate partition. We could probably create, you know what, why don't we just do that? I mean, we've got, so this right here is um, the gateway partition. You see we have a 15 megabyte partition that comes before the um, Windows 98 partition, but then we have this 72.5 gigabyte unallocated space. So we're going to actually just leave Windows 98 on this computer and see how this computer kind of handles having Windows 98 and Windows Vista installed at the same time. So we're going to go to disk zero unallocated space, press next. It's going to copy Windows files, ladies and gentlemen. That is, man, okay. I thought we were going to have, um, no, actually I'm not going to say anything because if I jinx myself, we're never going to get into problems. So it's good that it's actually working. So yeah, I'm just going to let it uh, copy these Windows files here and I'll come back when something interesting happens. All right, so it's asking for disk number two. So we're going to eject disk one right now. And uh, you can hear um, IMG burn in the background there. Uh, yeah, that is, I, I just finished burning disk number five. So we've got disk number one ejected. We have disk number two right here. We're going to insert that into the uh, drive and press OK. And so it, it got to 15% on copying Windows files. All right, so it is now asking for disk number three. It actually got to 43%. So we'll go ahead and eject the... Uh, drive right now and we're going to put in disk number three right here well looks like we have trouble in paradise um apparently we get this error message right here that says windows cannot copy files required for installation make sure all files required for installation are available and then restart the installation you're telling me we have to restart the entire thing okay well it just loads Okay, well that's very strange. I have no idea what caused that because all those CDs were burned. I, you know, let it verify. Um, IMG Burn has that verify feature where, you know, it can say, okay, like let's see if all the files are there and, you know, actually compare it to the ISO, which it did. There are no errors, so it's not anything with the CDs. Maybe we can just try a different edition. Let's maybe try, let's just go with Home Premium. Let's just do that and, uh, Press next, and if that doesn't work, maybe we can do home basic. So we'll see if uh, if this is successful. Um, I I honestly don't know what caused that error before, but we'll see if maybe choosing home premium uh, works a little bit better for us. But we will see. All right, guys. Well, check it out. Uh, we are actually booting up into Windows Vista right now. Um, the first portion of the setup actually finished, but I want to actually take you through what I actually had to do to get it working. So it turns out that that error message that we got actually had nothing to do with what addition that, that we installed, and I even thought it might have something to do with the flash drive that was still plugged into the back of the machine as I read some, um, you know, forum posts about that. What it actually was was just the fact that I had a Windows 98 um, partition on the hard drive, it was not liking that. And when I got to about disk number three, I tried multiple different uh, tries. I tried with Ultimate Home Premium, but it wouldn't work until I just went in and deleted all the partitions on the drive and then uh, had it installed just on the entire 80 gig drive. And that actually worked. So we got through the eight, or the eight. So we got through the five CDs right here uh, that, you know, contained Windows Vista. It did use all five of them. And then when it actually got done with the fifth one, it had me put in the first one again. But now we're actually booting off of the hard drive. And you can see we've got this message right here that says Windows Vista up there at the top. And it says, please wait a moment while Windows prepares to start for the first time. So that is pretty awesome. So we can answer part of our question here, uh, that being, can you install Windows Vista on the Windows 98 PC? And the answer is yes, we can absolutely install Vista. Now the question is, can we actually boot into Windows Vista and use it? Uh, and that is going to be probably um, a slight challenge, again, because this computer is 
It barely meets the system requirements for the RAM, and it doesn't even for the CPU. Again, Vista requires an 800 megahertz CPU, and this one has, I actually verified, it's a 433 megahertz Intel Celeron CPU. I'm certain we're probably not gonna be able to use Arrow at all. We will try to load the Arrow theme, but um, I'd be very surprised if it actually worked, uh, because it's probably, if it does work, it's going to be extremely laggy, so I don't think it's going to be usable. And we might even have to switch to, like, the Windows Classic theme. Alright, so we've got an arrow mouse cursor, as you can see. So, as you would expect, we have booted back into the setup, uh wizard right here so that it can finish up and do its very last uh, step which is completing installation but you'll notice that it actually is not in that super low color mode that it was in before but you can see that it's still in a pretty low screen resolution because this this window does not fit entirely on the screen it's literally off the screen up here as you can see and down here at the bottom the like uh process where it like has like the line going across where it tells you okay you're in part two which is you know installing windows you can barely see the the two down there and, and the one are both cut off and you cannot see that uh line there so still a little bit of an uh, of an issue things are not displaying like 100 percent correctly but uh we're definitely in a much higher color mode which is pretty awesome all right so we've just finished that uh, last portion of the setup and now the machine is restarting as you can see so there we go we've got the windows vista boot screen once again and let's actually see if since i've got that wireless card in here i wonder if windows vista has the proper drivers for that or if we're gonna have to install them uh from that cd i do have the cd but i wonder if windows vista has like a generic driver um, already included with it that, that will work. So yep, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our username. You can see actually that it's still running in a uh, much lower resolution because the window is actually not able to fit on the entire screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my uh, username here. We'll just call this, uh, let's just call it 98PC, why not? We're not gonna bother with the password and we're gonna call it 98PC. We'll just get rid of the PC there. Uh, let's choose this wallpaper right here. Computer name is not valid. The computer name, oh, there's a space. Oh, it cannot be the same as your username. Okay, so let's call this the $5 Windows 98. Oh, wow, I guess that's $5.98 PC. There we go. Okay, so we will use, uh, let's actually just ask me later. You can already see that it's kind of, uh, kind of struggling to keep up as I'm moving the mouse across this. Um, we'll just say we're in the Pacific time, even though I'm here in the Eastern time zone. Thank you. Let's hit start down here and, uh, we should boot right into, uh, to windows. All right. So here we are, uh, at the next portion of the setup where it's actually right now at the very bottom, it says, please wait while windows checks your computer's performance, which as you can see by what's going on on the screen right now is not very good. Um, so we're having trouble like even displaying the background you see we've got this like weird graphical effect going on um, and it's very very laggy as it's kind of fading through these uh, little tips here that's just kind of you know telling us some uh, information about Vista. But yeah, so right now it's, it's checking. Oh gosh, one, one thing that I should do is run a Windows Experience Index on here and see uh, what, what our score is. That's going to be hilarious. Th this thing's going to probably like completely fail the test. Okay, so it looks like we're logging in. We've got the uh, Vista Orb. Here is the welcome screen. It displays perfectly. Uh, we don't have any of those weird like graphical effects going on, so the welcome screen is actually displaying properly. Uh, there is no sound. Of course, I don't have any speakers on this computer, so it's not like it's gonna be able to play any you know sounds. But um, yeah, that is one thing I don't have for this computer is speakers. I kind of just realized that I don't have any speakers for this computer. Um, that's something I'm gonna have to find at like a thrift store or something. Uh, just to kind of complete the setup, kind of find some older looking, maybe like some beige speakers that'll match the uh, system. Yeah, that, that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to find. Let me know if you guys wanna see like a video where I do a bunch of hardware upgrades to this, because I've actually been thinking of getting either an SSD or a compact flash card, uh, you know, reader to, to put in this computer to actually load uh, the operating system off of that. So that could be for another video. Um, you know, just kind of like really maxing out the hardware. Um, I actually got a comment from somebody, I think it was on a 98 PC video, saying I should upgrade the CPU. Now, I don't have, obviously, a 
CPU at the moment that is compatible with this. Um, I, I would have to do some research and to figure out what the maximum CPU that this motherboard could support. And if I can find one, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, why not? You know, yeah, let's go ahead and just you know try to max it out and see. Uh, if we can get like a much more powerful CPU for this thing. This case here, since it's one of these, you know, really like smaller form factor computers is not the greatest thing to work with. Even when I was installing the RAM, you guys are probably able to see that the RAM is contained underneath these ribbon cables right here. So you don't have like a straight shot at the memory. You have to kind of go in at an angle and, you know, go underneath the ribbon cables to actually get it to, uh, you know, go in properly. But you can see here that we're now on the desktop. It's actually, you see, we've got the, uh, messages right here where it's setting up our personalized settings it's doing it for windows media player right now all right so here we are on the desktop everything has loaded up which is pretty awesome uh and it looks like from this flashing indicator down here at the very bottom oh here comes the welcome center loading up so this is where it's actually going to show us our specifications i believe but you can see that from this uh from the network icon down here at the very bottom it's actually found the wireless card check that out it says wireless networks are available, so we can connect this thing to my home network. Man, that is pretty awesome. So it's actually identifying itself as a x86 Family 6 Model 6 Stepping 5 computer, whatever on earth that means. 512 megabytes of RAM, standard VGA graphics adapter, and it's named the $5 one. This is, what is this name? Like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to go into system and check this out. Yeah, the, the processor. Okay, so it thinks that the processor is an x86, family 6, model 6, stepping 5, 432 megahertz processor. Um, and it's actually giving us a 1.0 Windows Experience Index score. So this is, I don't know what this, I mean, I assume it's just not able to figure out that it's an Intel Celeron CPU because this is an Intel Celeron that's in here. And yeah, it's giving us a, a 1.0 on the Windows Experience Index. So let's go into here and see um, what it's actually rating uh, all of our hardware. Because the way that Windows Experience Index works is it gives you whatever your, your lowest score is, that's what it gives you. Uh, as your overall score. So it looks like that the graphics and the gaming graphics scores are both 1.0. The RAM is 1.2, the processor is 1.2, believe it or not. The hard disk is 3.8. Um, so it's giving us a base score of, of 1.0, as you can see right here, determined by lowest subscore. So what I, what I wanna do is actually like go into device manager here and see um, what hardware it's actually detecting. So let's launch device management. Now it obviously does not load the Aero theme by default as you can see because it's having trouble even working with the Windows Vista basic theme. It's very, uh, very, very slow. Definitely not as usable as like Windows 98 is on this thing. Okay, so if we go, let's actually go to processors right here. So, okay, so it's actually finding it as an Intel processor. So it just says processors, Intel. So it, it's not really saying much more than just an, it, it's an Intel processor, but it's saying it's an Intel processor unlike whatever it was saying in the system dialog. Under network adapters here, it has found, so it's using the Athros wireless network adapter driver. We're gonna hit connect to a network right here, but you see it says wireless networks are available. And yep, it has found my home network, so we can connect to that and actually get this thing on the internet. Man, that is insane. What I wanna do is actually right click on here and go to personalize and see if we can even choose the arrow theme. I highly doubt this is gonna work, but it's worth a try. Uh, so we're gonna go, we're gonna scroll down here and go to theme. We'll actually change the, we'll see if we can change the uh, screen resolution as well. So we've got the Windows Vista theme, uh, actually, the Aero theme is not even going to show up because we don't have the uh, driver installed for the uh, graphics um, adapter. Check out what happens when I go to the start menu. The start menu literally takes up the entire, like, like over half of the screen. It, like, is so... Oh my gosh, it's kind of hilarious. Uh, so it says updates are not being installed automatically because I did not specify that. Let's go down here to updates. Now this machine actually just uses integrated graphics. So it's probably not going to be able to work with Arrow uh, because the integrated graphics that this computer has are probably gonna be pretty poor even with the driver installed. Um, so let's actually just go to display settings here and I wanna see if we can change the screen resolution. What I might try to do is bump this to the classic theme, the Windows classic theme, and see if we get any better performance out of that. So it looks like we can choose between 640 by 480, and so yeah, it's actually not letting us even change the uh, screen resolution. 
uh, up to whatever this would be probably 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768 let's actually run a, a winver here and uh, so yep it's version 6.0 build 6000 that's the RTM uh, build of Windows Vista uh, yes, I was able to choose Windows Vista Ultimate. Uh, that's the, the version that I chose here. So we can't change the screen resolution. We cannot change the theme. Oh, I do want to actually just change the theme to, to the Windows Classic theme and see if that gives us any better performance. We can just go to Windows Classic, hit Apply, and you know, this is a bit more of a basic theme. So yeah, here's the uh, Classic theme applied. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to, to use this one, you obviously can. So honestly, guys, I have to say I am pretty impressed uh, that this computer is actually able to run Windows Vista. Now, obviously, I knew going into it that this was not, if it did install, that it was not going to perform uh, like 100%. I mean, there's no way. This computer is six years older than this OS, over six years older than this OS. It has just now been upgraded to the minimum amount of RAM that Vista needs. And the CPU speed is half of Vista's minimum, you know, recommended CPU speed. It's 433 megahertz. Uh, so I'm just pretty impressed that it was actually able to work properly. Obviously, this is not in any way whatsoever the most ideal way to use uh, an old computer like this. But uh, that's really what these videos are all about. It's just trying these crazy experiments to see if we can actually get, in this case, a, a OS that is six years newer than this computer to run on this uh, old computer that was designed for Windows 98. Um, so uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week, actually multiple times a week on this channel. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments for me, be sure to leave those down below. Maybe you guys want to see me continue this with Windows 7. Windows 7, I think, is going to be a bit more of a challenge because its uh, system requirements have been moved up. Uh, and, you know, now we've actually maxed out this computer with 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, I think Windows 7 recommends a minimum of one gigabyte. So that could pose a bit of a challenge for us. But again, like I said at the very beginning of this video, I have seen some workarounds of some people being able to install both Vista and 7 on computers that do not meet their officially uh, stated minimum hardware requirements. So that might be a video for another time. If you guys want to see that, be sure to let me know down below. And as always, guys, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support here on this channel. And I will see you all in the next video. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the... Oh, jeez. Okay.